Hello everyone, welcome inside the Red Earth Production Studios for this edition of YBM Cast, powered by Game 7 Baseball, Game7Baseball.com. Get your team registered, it's out there. Spring, summer season coming up, got a lot of great stuff. We're going to be out with the guys, we're working on our winter workout tour, having a great time with that. Be uh, looking for that while you're here, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button, that's what we do. We appreciate all the support of Youth Baseball Midwest from all the fans out there. While you're at it, hit the dinger right there next to it. You don't want to give up no dingers, though, do you? No, no, sir. But we don't mind giving up a dinger because that gets you all your notifications for upcoming episodes such as this. And today uh, we have on the show Player Spotlight, Jack Noby, St. Francis Borgia High School. Uh, welcome to the show, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, we met at the uh, state championships last year. Yep. Guys finished off. It was second place. Yeah, second place. But uh, I think overall the team was pretty happy about that. I, I thought you guys played a, a, a great tournament um, all the way up there. I, it was a very good game. It's a competitive game. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, Festus, uh, that was a good baseball team as well. Yeah, Festus was solid on the mound, and they could – they could poke it around too. They were pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, I th you know, and that's the thing about um, class five baseball in this state. You have class six, which is, but I think both uh, both these classes are very talented. I think class five is is got some serious uh, baseball teams. I think you can compete on those levels. Yeah, and especially like when you're in the playoffs. Like I talked to. Other kids, they like Zumwalt South beat them earlier mm -hmm. in the year. Yeah. So I mean, they're so evenly matched that it's really just it's really just who had it that day. And I mean, Festus obviously came to play that tournament. Yeah. Uh, Shermer on the mound yeah. there. That uh, he's tough. Yeah, we didn't uh, we didn't ever really get him dialed up. He he pretty much held us to nothing all game. But you're back. Yep. Right. Senior year. There you go. But we're gonna jump back here a little bit. We always like to do this. Always like to. Um, People to get you, get to know you a little bit. Growing up playing baseball, Are you from the uh, the area around here? Yeah, I live in Washington, Missouri, like forty five minutes away, so I'm in the area. Very good. Grew up playing baseball around the Lou, whatnot. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your experience there. Yeah, so like everyone, four years old playing t ball, just you know town ball, um, and then I think town ball. I like that. Yeah, that's what we called it. <laughs> um, and then like seven or eight, you. Uh, I played with the Uni Wildcats. Um, Aaron oh. Aaron Knut's the coach. He's like yeah. the first person like introduced me to travel ball. I guess is what you call it. Um, at that age, it wasn't really travel ball, but we played tournaments and stuff. And then nine U, I, I joined the Tigers, which was probably like the biggest step I've taken in terms of playing level. That was a big step for going from uh, the Uni Wildcats to the Tigers. So that was good. And then I played with uh, Rawlings Tigers Oswald up until 14 U and then joined the Tigers uh, high school program and I've played with them ever since. Yeah, who were you playing with? Uh, what, was, uh, what was some of the guys you were around with the Rawlings Tigers? Uh, I still play with a lot of them. Uh, Tyson Oswald, uh, Will Fieser goes to Eureka. Um, there were a bunch of guys, a lot of them, you know, don't play baseball anymore, they play other sports, but I mean, they were just kind of a, a bunch of guys. Um, but yeah, those are probably the main. Uh, Ethan Brozier yeah. uh, joined us late, same with Nick Livingston. Um, those are just some guys that are. So you didn't play for your dad? He was, uh, Graham Oswald was the head coach, and lucky enough for me, he was he knew a lot about what he was doing. But my dad kind of just helped out when he could. But Absolutely. he never really, like, coached me, coached me. Yeah. So your experience, youth baseball, you know, nine through, you're playing with the Rawlings Tigers. Where where'd you guys travel to? What was what was that like? Um, we, I mean, like, nine new to, like, I'd say 12 or 13 new, we kind of just traveled wherever just you know to have some fun with the team and then 14 or 13 u 14 u we started going to indianapolis grand park oh yeah that was a big tournament um we went to kansas city i believe i can't remember where the park was but that was i think we had a good couple of good tournaments there um it's really all i remember for like the bigger tournaments yeah and we were i think we went up to i don't even remember columbia we went up to columbia for a tournament um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Did you did you play any other sports in your youth side? Basketball, football, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I played uh, basketball uh, and football. I played basketball up until my sophomore year, 
and then I quit football after my freshman year. After your freshman yep. year, did you play pee wee football too? Yep, fifth. Yeah. I started in fifth grade, Here and then go. took it all the way up to freshman year. Now, youth baseball. You know who were the who were some guys that uh, really helped you continue uh, helped you develop and understand the game. Uh, when it comes to youth baseball, I think the first person to really help me understand the game was uh, Aaron Cranute of the Union Wildcats. Mm -hmm. um, he was pretty good in like just building the foundation of you know being a good ball player. And then uh, after that, I'd have to thank most probably Graham Oswald for all he's done for me. He coached me for what five years. Um, he was a great coach. He played baseball in college, and uh, he really. Cared for me as a person and cared for me as a baseball player and really saw, I guess, a lot more in me than other people did, yeah. which was really cool. Mom and dad, mom travels, you know, dad travels. What is that experience like? And, you know, what were those things? Because, you know, when you start doing that kind of thing and whatnot, it's important that uh, you have that support. Yeah, they've been really good. I mean, luckily they enjoy it. Like, they enjoy going to out-of-town <laughs> tournaments. Uh, we were talking this morning, we were just going over, like, I guess since my youth career is over with travel baseball, we were just going over like our favorite tournaments and they were just naming off a bunch of them. And they were really supportive. They really, they took me anywhere that I needed to go. Um, and my, my grandparents also helped in when they could because um, my parents had to work. But no, everyone in my family has been pretty supportive all the way through and I haven't really had any problems with that. That's so cool. that's been fun. Yeah, because mom's got to wash the uniform, right? Yep, yep, mom's always uh, going to the... I always got the looks, but it's true. I would say, don't worry about getting your your uniform dirty. That's what moms are for. Yep. She she <laughs> they always said it was it was a good game when my uniform got dirty. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Get the borax out. Go to yep. the car wash. Right. I don't know how she did it, but she managed to get them clean every time. <laughs> that's that's and that's what it's about. You know, I love that. So, youth baseball. You move into playing with the Tigers. You know, at 14, you and, and, and moving in that experience, when you start getting towards the high school level, when did you really think that uh, you were maybe a little bit above? Where do you think you fit into the scope of things? Were you, did you, were you feeling you were on that elite level? Uh, I mean, uh, throughout my youth level, we always played at a pretty high level as a team, but I was never really like the best player on my team throughout mm -hmm. the youth. Um, but I'd say 15 U is high school when high school baseball started is probably when I started to realize looking towards the next level and looking towards college and, and that it was a realistic thing for me. Yeah. 15 U, were you always a pitcher? Um, actually when it was like 12 or 13 U, I wanted to quit pitching at all. And my really? dad pretty much forced me to keep pitching. <laughs> so, I mean, luckily for that. <laughs> Thanks dad. It wasn't an argument. No, I don't want to. He was, it was more of a, I just want to hit. And he was like, no, you're going to throw. And I was like, uh, whatever I will. <laughs> Cause I, I was, I was terrible. I'm not going to lie. I couldn't throw strikes. I was just a small little kid who didn't really know how to throw the ball. Um, but I only wanted to hit. Yeah. So could you, could you hit bombs? Uh, I would, I would consider myself definitely more of a hitter throughout my career. Um, I don't know if I hit bombs, but I've always been like the skinnier kid, but I definitely made contact a lot. So that's been good. Are you, are you still, you still hitting in high school? Yeah, I'll still, I think I'm playing shortstop for Borgia and I'll, I'll still definitely hit. So that looking forward to that. Absolutely. Hey, you know what? Hit till they kick you out. Yeah, right? I mean, I, I love hitting. I, I enjoy it, but, um, <laughs> it's definitely hard. <laughs> Pitching's a lot easier in my opinion. So I'll stick to that. There you go. I love that. The uh, going into high school, you know, you, you go to a private school, evidently, that way. What's the difference there? Do you think there's, um, uh, you know, I don't know what tryouts are like and things of that nature. Would you see it's a little bit more difficult in, than coming to a private, uh, going to a private school than a uh, public school? Just curious. Uh, I don't know if I'd don't say know. more difficult. Um, but there's definitely like me going to a smaller school. I'd say the one positive is just like there's a better community. Like everyone's got your back. Like I don't mm -hmm. know about the bigger schools, but I feel like when we play, it just means a lot more for us um, compared to the bigger schools, maybe. But I'm not. I'm not too sure. Yeah, no, it's just interesting perspective. And I think either way, you know, because we do, we you know, you have CBC, which is a bigger school, yeah. or private. It's just interesting to me when you start looking at the private to the public schools, the differences in. You know, you get some of the kids, you you, you know who's coming. Uh, do you see a lot of the kids in the summertime? Yeah. I, are you talking kids I play with or kids yeah, play against? Yeah, uh, from Borgia? Um, a lot of them play uh, Legion Baseball. Gotcha. Yeah, and then uh, Kate and Carol plays with the Prospects. 
So we're the only two that I think play uh, like I guess, uh, travel ball. That's right, because that Washington team was yep. was They're really good. very good legion. Uh, yeah, Kent Getze over there mm-hmm. with the post two eighteen. They they do a great job because they had uh, a mix of Washington, yeah, which was really good. They class were a, five, they were a solid team, yeah. And uh, I know uh, they finished in the Mid South Regional, uh, and uh, they were in the Final Four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they went pretty far. Yeah, they did. I, I saw them play at the state championships. That was yeah. I saw you down there. Yeah, that was. Oh, that's right. You did come down and support those guys. Yeah. yeah. Is it uh, Candlebinder? Yeah, Reagan Candlebinder, the first our first baseman. I think he played first base for them too. Yeah, yeah. He's a big, tall kid. Yeah, he's uh, tall, lanky. He can he can do a lot. <laughs> he's going to I think Southwest Baptist University. Yes, he he committed just pretty recently. Yeah. A lot of fun. So talk to us a little bit about the difference here, you know, and I, I always like to get this perspective from you guys. When you're playing summer baseball to high school baseball, what are the differences, you know, that you see? And what you know, I think uh, for spring baseball, it's more about like the team, you know, everyone's mm-hmm. got the goal of winning the state championship. Um, but I think for summer baseball, it's more like you focus on yourself and getting recruited. And that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, everyone's got to make it to the next level. But I think that's the big biggest difference is spring's more team focused and summer baseball's more player focused. And like spring baseball, you more develop and get better. And then summer baseball, you know, you showcase what you developed and you, you know, you show everyone what you got. <laughs> do you like which do you like one or the other better? I don't know. That's tricky. I love summer baseball and I've been so blessed with a, such a good uh, high school team that I really can't choose. <laughs> I really don't mind either. I love them both. <laughs> I, 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 hey, you know. Each each has their um, their uh, positives, yeah. right? I mean, you go to summer baseball, you're traveling all over the country, you're staying in hotels with your friends, um, but then you get to spring baseball and you play Washington, your rival, or you play other schools that you're like rivals against. It's it's a lot a lot of fun too. You had a unique experience this uh, past summer uh, wearing the t-shirt there. Uh, you got to play with the uh, the Red Scout team. Yeah, that was the, this fall. That was I played with the Tigers this, this summer and then. Play with the Red Scout team this fall. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. What was that like? Um, it was definitely the highest level of baseball I've ever played. Um, I didn't know any of the guys going into it, but uh, they, they ended up being pretty cool. And one of them is actually going to Xavier on the team. So I got to meet with him a little bit too, talk to him. What is that like? Does, does it make you go outside your comfort zone to develop relationships? Yeah, I mean – that opportunity helped me get to know kids from all over the Midwest, and now I, I would say I have a friendship with a lot of them. Um, so that's been cool. And then, obviously, they're good at baseball, so you network with them, you know other kids, you talk about other kids, and then, you know, other coaches get to know you too. So, I mean, you just get your name out there, which is, which is kind of cool. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's the biggest, uh, I, I, the greatest opportunity is learning how to network and, mm-hmm. and talk to other people because you got to get cloistered in your bubble – and then when you're out there, it's it's not an easy thing, is it? No, it's it's a lot difficult, a lot more difficult to play with kids that you you know you don't know and that you're trying to get to know than play with the kids you've been playing with for the past ten years. Yeah. But it's a it's a cool opportunity and fun fun challenge for sure. Absolutely. Now Borgia this year, you got some guys coming back. Yeah, we only lost uh, two players, so we pretty oh, much man. have the whole team back. So <laughs> we're looking to make some damage. <laughs> You're ready to roll, aren't you? Yeah, we're excited. Are you guys on a? Uh, we're, we haven't. We're we're going to be talking about some of this stuff uh, coming up here, and um, hopefully get your coach on, talk to him yeah. a little bit. But um, you guys, uh, like I said, one game away from the title. Um, what makes you think that you got a good opportunity to get back to the Final Four? Um, I mean, talent wise, we're right there. We almost have the same team. Our pitching, we didn't lose a single one of our pitchers. And I think once you've like been there, mm-hmm. and you know you have that chip on your shoulder, like you realize you you know what it, you have to do to what it takes. Um, it's a lot, you know. You understand what you need to do, and then you know once we get there, you know just don't do what you did last year. <laughs> it it that experience helps. Yeah, the it? experience definitely helps, and we are definitely senior heavy this year, so we have a lot of experience under our belt. You know, there's some uh, really good schools out there in the Class 5. I think uh, you guys are right there in the mix. Uh, good opportunities. Talk to us a little bit about your pitching staff. Who are the, some of the guys that we should be looking at um, besides yourself? Yeah, we have uh, Caden Carroll. He helped us a lot last year. I would say he was probably considered our two last year. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to Truman State. Uh, and then uh, Regan Condelbender. He saw him at uh, yep. the Legion Tournament. 
he'll be he'll be good. Um, we got Caden Packy. He he'll be a good bullpen piece. But we have a bunch of different guys that you know will get innings in, throw some strikes, and let our defense do the work. So I'd say those are our, probably our main pitchers. I like that. All you guys, I don't. I I'm not seeing Carroll too much. I saw a little bit. Big, tall, lanky guys mm-hmm. got good good run on your fastballs. Yep. Uh, good pitching staff. And if you can go deep with your pitching staff, that makes a huge difference, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's you have a lot of trust. You know, whoever you put out there, they're gonna throw they're gonna throw, throw strikes and they're gonna get guys out, which is helpful for our offense too, just to have that faith in our defense. Yeah, yeah. This summer, you know, um, once you get past that. What's your plans for the summer before you head over to Xavier? Um, a lot of people have asked me that question. I'm not too sure yet whether I'm going to play in a collegiate league or maybe just take my arm for a rest. I'm not. I'm not too sure yet. I wish I knew. <laughs> um, I mean, last year I threw about seven innings in the spring. So if that happens again, I'll probably cut back on the innings in the in the summer just to give my arm a rest for the fall. I, I think that's interesting. You know, and and if you if you win a state championship, you know, take a break, right? Yeah. I don't blame you. I'll uh, I'll put my arm through some. Or maybe some just innings. go swing the bat. Yeah, I'll I'll try that. I'll just I'll quit pitching during the summer and just be go a swing DH, the bat. right? Yeah, <laughs> that'd be fun. <laughs> the coach would be like, "What?" <laughs> Sometimes it's good to take a little break, right? Yeah, there's nothing. I mean, as long as you you know stay in, stay in the weight room, make sure you keep throwing. Don't just completely stop what you're doing. But I think it's good for your arm and good for you know just in general, just yeah. taking a little break. Last uh, thing here, Xavier University, um, Cincinnati. How was your recruiting process? What was it like for you? Uh, my recruiting process was, I think, a lot different from others because it started in my 16U season, and I was being recruited uh, just as a position player, just really? as an outfielder from a couple of schools, and they didn't – I was throwing like – 80 miles an hour my 16 new summer so I wasn't really getting too many looks for a pitcher um, and then jumped to the futures games uh, I went as of just a position player I wasn't even supposed to pitch and then you know it's the last inning of one of the days and it was one of our pitchers got knocked out early and our coach was like we need a guy to throw <laughs> I was like I'll do it uh, and then I ended up hitting uh, 88 miles an hour there which was a PR by a couple miles an hour, which I was pretty surprised with. Um, and then that off season, I got a lot more calls for pitching. Um, and then everything ramped up kind of that off season, this past off season. Yeah. That was really big for me. Who's been helping you with your <clears throat> pitching? You know, who who are the guys that you, that you credit helping you with your velocity, helping you get yourself uh, up to that uh, velocity? Uh, I'm in the same group as like Ty Holman, Carter Cox. Uh, with we all work together with. Uh, Adam Jansen at Ace, he's uh he's done pretty well for me. Uh, I have to thank him a lot for most of my uh, my pitching stuff. He does a good job. Yeah, he, he knows what he's doing. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and we just uh, talked with Ty Holman mm-hmm. here recently. So yeah, all you guys, and that and I always hear, I like the camaraderie thought process when you're when you're working in those groups. Does mm-hmm. it help you understand? you know, that competitive uh, nature of things? Yeah, I mean, Adam puts us all in a group together. So we have, you know, Braden Schnurbush, Carter Cox, Ty Holman, all those guys. Um, and we all throw pretty much the same speed. And we all, you know, trash talk each other. Who's throwing <laughs> harder here? Who's throwing harder there? So it's definitely a lot more competitive. Um, and it helps us a lot. And it'll help us a lot in the long run, I think. How has it helped you? You know, arm care is a huge thing right now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you seeing guys with Tommy John surgeries or things of that nature. What is that? Where does that put that perspective for you? Have you had arm issues that way? No, I've been lucky, you know, knock on wood, but I've been lucky my whole career. I haven't really had any injuries or problems, even problems with my arm. Um, so obviously what Adam Jansen's doing is, is uh, working so far. So we'll keep that going. Absolutely. Xavier, you're going as a pitcher, mm-hmm. right? So it's worked out that way. Your dad pushing you that way. Mm-hmm. You, you know, a shot. The future games that usually comes along in in a lot of the conversations mm-hmm. we've had. That has really helped you with you know Kevin Mulder mm-hmm. picking you guys up that way. Who was your coach at that at that future games? Oh, do you remember? I don't know if I remember his name. He was the he's the head baseball coach for uh, Southern Boone. 
Oh, Brian Ash. Yes, there we go. It was Brian mm-hmm. Ash. Um, and then there was one other coach. I think the coach for Staley. Dave Wilson. It might have been Dave Wilson. I'm not too sure, but they were they were good. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. talked to Brian Ash this past spring. Saw him again because we played them. So it's been yeah. good. Very good. And this future games was weird. Everyone was getting their invite for Team Missouri, uh, like during the spring, during the early summer, and like three weeks before the future games, I had no invite, and I got a text from my summer coach, and he was like, "Oh, you're playing for the future games." I was like, "Team Missouri is full." He was like, "No, you're not playing for Team Missouri. You're playing for Team Select." And I was like, "All right, let's do it." You know, I got an opportunity. Let's let's make the most of it. Absolutely, because I think the Team Select is a combination of like Kansas players mm-hmm. and yeah, it's a bunch of kids. Can't team. There's no such thing as Team Kansas, so it's a bunch of Kansas kids, and then I guess the kids who you know, weren't good enough for Team Missouri. <laughs> I guess you could say. But I mean, all the hey, kids, you got there. Yeah, all the kids of the future games are really good. So. Mm-hmm. It's a great opportunity. You took the most of it. Talk to us about Xavier. What do you? What's your expectation there? What brought you to to pick a, pick Xavier? Uh, I mean, through my recruiting process, you know, talking to other coaches, they were kind of you know on and off, weren't responding to you, would respond to you a lot. But the Xavier coach, I mean, he was almost texting me every day at some point. So that was really good, just to know that he really wanted me as a player. Um, you know, I took my visit, you know, by myself within like the first week of us talking. Mm-hmm. So that just really shows that, you know, he really wanted me as a player. Um, of course the campus was amazing. <laughs> I've been on that campus. Yeah, it's really nice. It's nice, yeah. Uh baseball field's good and then the baseball team success recently has been pretty good. They made the the tournament this past year. Yeah. Um, so that was good. So it's been and then I went up on my official visit in November. Stay with the team. That was really cool. All, the whole team gets together really well. So I'm really, really excited for that. Very good. Education-wise, uh, do you have you made your decision on that yet, or are you still thinking about what you what you might do that way? No, I haven't made my official decision, but I'll probably study business or somewhere in that uh, yeah. region. The whole baseball team seemed to love a uh, finance degree. They seem to really talk that up. So <laughs> I'll see. I'll see. Nothing wrong with that, right? No, nothing wrong with that at all. So – Looks like, is the ultimate goal the MLB? Uh, I think every kid, you know, playing in high school and going into high level baseball, I think that's that should be everyone's goal. Yeah. You know, just play at the highest level that you can Absolutely. for as long as you can. Absolutely, yeah. man. Absolutely. Jack, it's a pleasure, man. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. I don't know. I appreciate the time. Really enjoyed the conversation. Jack Noby, folks, St. Francis Borgia High School, uh, one to watch. Going to be, uh, I think they got a terrific run in them still. So we appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, please, again, if you like what we're doing, hit the subscribe button. Hit that dinger next to it because that's what we do around here. We hit dingers. And that will get you all your upcoming or all your notifications. There it is for upcoming episodes such as this. And we appreciate it very much. Have a great day in the Lord. All you pitchers, you got some advice for pitchers? Um, Just, just stay at it, you know. Velo might not be there, location might not be there, but just just keep going. It'll work its way out. I love that. It did for you, right? Yep. There you go. There you go. Perseverance. I love that. All you hitters, hit them where they ain't. We'll see you all next time.